And today's topic, I hope you guys like this, is Mystery Monday, Missing and Murder. So before I get started, please go in. Don't forget to hit the like button. It really helps me out. I'm trying to grow this community and the censorship does not make it easy. So please go in, like my stuff and share my videos, my channel, everything. It really does help me out. Okay. Like I said, this is a long one. So this is fun. This is what I did. I took a few different questions that were out there regarding some murder mysteries that had not been solved and people had put stuff on the blog, people had reached out to me and I compiled a pretty big post of all of these murder mysteries. So if you are interested, hang tight, get you something to drink, sit back, relax. Cause like I said, this is going to be one of our more lengthy videos here. So the first one I want to have a look at is and I'll just go with the question. It says, hello, Lynn. I love the way you solve mysteries. There is a bizarre disappearance in the Australian outback where a man named Patty Morardi, I think that's how you say his name. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong. In the Australian area simply vanished midway through his evening meal along with his dog. Are you able to solve this mystery? Is his disappearance connected to other strange disappearances along the Stewart Highway? So... Patty Morardi. I wanted to focus on him and figure out what happened. I guess this man, you know, him and his dog, they, he was heating up food for the dog or himself. And next thing you know, he's gone. When people went to go check on him, the food is still like some is in the microwave. Uh, the guy's nowhere to be found and they, they never did find him. It was just the, the oddest thing. So people were trying to put together this puzzle of what happened to him. So, again, very interesting case. And when I focused on him, I, I got the image of a man and he was confused and he was wandering around. He had this blank look on his face and he acted like he was lost. He was in a familiar environment, but to him, how he was interpreting his environment, it's like it wasn't making sense to him. And as I look at him a little closer, I get that he suffered a stroke and he was acting odd because he didn't really know what he was doing, his mind and his physical actions. He just, it was, um, it would remind you of how you would think of someone with dementia would act. It was like that. He just was very confused. And when I placed myself in his home or where he was, I saw him preparing his food. It was like, I was watching this like a movie. He feels to have a routine and he was just going about his day like any other day, you know, just chilled out, doing his thing. His dog was by his side as he normally was. And in this brief moment, he feels different. It was like something just switched. He was different. And the look on his face changed where he had no expression to him. He was wandering around, wondering where he was. He took off his glasses and was just doing these really odd things around his house. And then I heard this question and I wanted to pose it out there. Did they find things out of order? They might not have found anything missing like a robbery or destroyed like a burglary or some act of violence, but were things out of place. And that was something that I got to put out there as a question to pose and ponder over. Maybe things weren't missing, but just out of order or something strange about it. I got that he managed to get outside, you know, in this state of mind, how he was feeling. And I sensed that he didn't recognize his own house and he felt like he needed to leave. Like he was at a strange place and he wanted to leave it. He wandered into a wooded area. He got lost. His dog being loyal stayed with him. Again, he wandered deep into a wooded area that's very remote and it became so disoriented that he couldn't find his way out. His dog stayed by his side the whole time. This dog was like the most loyal, loving companion. And I get that Patty perished due to lack of food, water, and the elements, but I don't think he even really knew what he was doing. It, it almost had this peaceful vibe to it, to where he just like went to sleep and he didn't wake up, but it was because of his surrounding that contributed to that. And then I got that this would now be viewed as more of a recovery mission. And then I got to ask this question, have they searched the wooded areas? Have they, and I also saw this image of a lot of down trees and tree stumps and I sensed that this area was hit by a storm and it would be walkable from his house around three-ish hours from town. So imagine someone putzing around, kind of wandering around 
and about three hours out. And I also got that it was an area where there were storms. So check that out. Does that make sense? I'm, I'm not from there. I'm not familiar with that area, but those were the things that I saw. And that could be a benchmark of where to start, where to start this process. Okay, so the next mystery I wanted to look at says, Hi, Lynn. Did this young lady, the former Miss USA, kill herself or was this because she knew too much? The whole thing feels suspicious. So I heard when I put that question out there that this is a classic case of innocence lost. And Chelsea, which I understand that to be her first name, feels to be very naive as she went through the process and she became Miss USA. She didn't realize that competing and winning meant that she would become part of or participate in some sort of an agenda. I see that shortly after she won, she was approached by some older wealthy men and forced to be a part of their, the phrase I heard was love triangle. And I think we know what that means in exchange for money. She didn't want the money, but it looks like she was bullied in such a way. And then I heard this phrase that if you have to do something that disgusts you, you might as well take the money for it. And I think that's how she tried to rationalize it or at least make peace with what was going on or what she was feeling forced into doing. And this continued on. She did not want to be a part of it, but they would not allow her to quit. In fact, then I heard the love triangle grew and they wanted to pass her to others in their group. Things were so out of control that she had nowhere to go. She felt no one would believe her and could no longer take it. One day after a pass around session, which completely disgusted her, she decided that she could no longer look herself in the mirror and in a rash moment, she took her life. It was like she was not living this life, doing this for one more minute and, and she ended it. And as I tune into her, I get these very, very mixed emotions. I sense that she was at peace and she was thankful that she was out of this situation, but she was also crying. And then I understood it as she was explaining that the sadness isn't because she's in spirit. She wasn't sad that she was gone. She wasn't sad about where she was now, but because she never meant to hurt the family or cause any of them shame, that's what she was incredibly sad about. So, I mean, take some time, just send this poor lady some positive energy toward her, toward her family, because that feels like the heavy thing that she's carrying right now and working through even on the other side. Okay, next next case to look at here. It says, hi, Lynn. Hi, Lynn. <laughs> there is a famous case of a couple that were murdered in Marlboro Sounds in New Zealand. Again, I probably said that wrong. I'm so sorry. It was New Year's Eve and it was 1997. Their names were Olivia Hope and Ben Smart. A man was convicted of their murder but there is controversy around the police case with many people believing the man sentenced is not guilty. Their bodies have never been found. What actually happened to this young couple? And this was a really interesting, interesting one. And what is so fun about doing readings is I even surprise myself because I don't go into it thinking one thing or another. I just see what comes forward and I can be just as shocked as what you are. So this was one that... I felt like should be in a movie here. So as I focused on this, I do get that they convicted the wrong person. That did come through to me pretty strong. I get the need to accuse someone and put minds to rest, encourage the police to arrest someone and get them convicted. I cannot get the name of the person that actually did it, but I can see how these events played out. And I did have some things that people could potentially go and investigate. I get that Olivia and Ben, they boarded a water taxi. This is New Year's Eve. They get on this water taxi. They're headed to a boat that they did not get on. There was some yacht, there was some, whether it's an after party or whatever you want to call it, they're taking the taxi to this, this yacht and they don't get on it. I think it was too full or for whatever reason, they didn't do it. And then there was this guy, they referred to him as a mystery man on this water taxi that offered to take them to his yacht instead at which time Ben and Olivia, they agreed to do this. They're like, hey, we're not done. It's New Year's Eve, why not let's go have fun? It was New Year's, they wanted to continue to celebrate. The taxi driver did note the correct description of the yacht that he took them to. However, the owner of the yacht was not the mystery man. 
that they were trying to identify. The mystery man lied to get this young couple alone. So basically these guys, just to summarize what I had down here, that they were taking this young couple over to a yacht to do a party that they decided that they weren't gonna get on, whether the boat was too full, there was no space, whatever it may be. So this guy's taxiing him over, they say no. The other guy that's also sharing this taxi at the same time says, hey, come on over to my yacht instead. We'll go do X, Y, Z over here. You can hang out here. You can spend the night. I got plenty of room. So the guy driving the water taxi takes him over to said guy's yacht, which it really wasn't his yacht. He was making the whole thing up just to get him alone and get him on this boat. And so that's what they did. They took him up on his offer thinking they were getting on his boat when in reality, that was not his boat. So the mystery man truly is a mystery. He's not the owner of the yacht, which they tried to pin this on. It says, once they boarded the yacht, the man led them in the direction with a promise of celebrating a little more before going to bed, at which time he cornered them and he did proceed to kill them. The man was drunk and heavily under the influence. He took the bodies and he drove them out to sea in the morning, the next day I got. And he used some small type of boat that was either connected by this yacht, but I got that, I think the little boat was his boat. It was like some little speeder boat. And then I hear it was a, I couldn't quite make it out. And for all you boaters out there, people that know a lot more about boating than what I do, I did not want to like cheat, so to speak, and go Google this, but it was either called like a schooner or a schooner or something like that. It was like a smaller boat. That's what he really owned. He didn't own the big yacht. He owned this other smaller boat and that's what he put the bodies on to go take them out to sea to go dump them. Then I got the man that did this. He cleaned the mess up really well, but he did leave some forensic evidence behind. And when the water taxi guy was questioned, he did his best to describe this guy. He was much more confident in recalling what the yacht was and what it looked like and the details of this yacht where he dropped this young couple off. But when the police learned the identity of who was associated to the yacht, I got that they a little bit railroaded this investigation to lead people, especially this water taxi guy, to recall facts that maybe were not completely accurate but fit the narrative to be able to pin this on the yacht owner, not the mystery man because they're not the same people, but rather the yacht owner to solve this case. So once the word of the case got out, this guy named Watson, the incorrectly assumed mystery man, so Watson really owned the, the yacht where they were killed, not this mystery man, he started to clean up his yacht, paint and do all these other things, etc. He was not a good guy. He was very mouthy. He had a record. But I also got he didn't commit this crime. He's not a good guy, but he didn't actually do this. He didn't want the police on him because he didn't want to be the scapegoat. So he wanted to make sure nothing was there to be found. He already did not have a good relationship with the law enforcement and he didn't want to be pulled into this. And he thought, oh, geez, he knew that it happened where it happened. He knew that the water taxi guy drove him to his yacht, but he wasn't associated to what was actually going on. And he thought, oh, geez, I got to go in here and clean this boat up because I don't want to be tied to this mess. He didn't want any affiliation with it whatsoever i get that that way they if i get that the way to really find who did this or what is going on is to look for who had a small boat at that port area at that time who docked near this yacht and who had something they would call a schooner or schooner or whatever it is the man that did this is not the yacht owner if they start there then this can lead them to the correct mystery man and again this was such a twisted interesting case and uh, between recalling events between lying about who owns what boat the whole thing I just found was incredibly twisted just twisted but truth is stranger than fiction right they do always say that okay so next case I want to have a look at so Silen, can you tell me whatever happened to Mrs. Levitz she was a very wealthy widow of a furniture tycoon who owned the Levitt Furniture Stores. In November 1995, she disappeared and there were very peculiar circumstances. The case remains unsolved. Some speculate that she was thrown in the Mississippi River. Her body has never been found. So, okay, I wanted to have a look at this and try to figure this out and who, who would be responsible for such a thing. 
And when I focus on this, I immediately place my mind to the question of who did this rather than why. That was just my go-to. When I put the intent, I'm like, who did it? I just, that's what I wanted to know first. And I saw a family tree emerge, but it had a really odd appearance to it. It has dashes and lines as if the family is super disconnected. Multiple marriages, separations, all those things seem to make it really confusing all the way down the line. I did note that her last husband, the one that left her the large inheritance upon his death, had a family that was not related to her, whether it was children's, um, a sibling maybe, but I want to say a child. It is that person that is what I want to say one degree separated that looks to have been the person that was behind this. They did not do the actual crime, but they hired a gentleman to carry this out in exchange for, and then I heard the phrase, a bag of cash. Apparently, when Jacqueline inherited this money, the family member was so furious and felt that it should not have gone to her, or at least not in the quantity that she did receive, that from that point forward, their anger and their rage manifested this into reality until they fulfilled their wish to take the money from her. They were livid that she had that much money. They just didn't feel like she deserved it or something like that. Then I got to follow the money trail and see how these assets were divided upon her death. That'd be a really good clue. Look for someone that is not related by blood, maybe some kind of an in-law or something. It was something from his side of the family or someone rather who had something to gain. Look at who had something to gain that was not related to her, but was related to her husband that had passed away. That's where I get this rooted from. So the next question, where did they put the body? And this was so funny. I heard someone laugh. They were laughing really loud. And then I heard this voice say, Carol Baskins did it. And they were laughing so hard. And for any of you who watch Tiger King, you'll totally get that joke. And then immediately I got that Jacqueline had quite the sense of humor. I felt like she was trying to make me laugh as I was doing this reading. It was so strange. And then I hear... Someone say, seriously, they made sure her body was never going to be found. She was directly or indirectly put into the water, but done so in an area where alligators resided. So yeah, she made it to the water, but not directly in the water. She went through an alligator to get into the water. I got to look for areas near her home where alligators live. This person was told to put her there and do not leave the area until you know that she's gone. I also see tall grass. I see a very old abandoned dock. And this is where the person sat and watched and waited to make sure she was gone. I got that this hired assassin also looks to smoke. They went through about a pack of cigarettes at least. I mean, this person was smoking a lot while they waited. Go to this area in question. And I got to talk to everybody who would have been there. Businesses, gas station stores see if they saw anything odd or recall anything from that day. I know this was many, many years ago. People can even remember that far back. And then I got that forensic evidence that the site may be gone, but maybe someone in that area saw something. And I get the person that was there, they were there until almost sunrise because the sun was starting to come up over the horizon before they left. So possibly someone passed them, saw something. I don't know. It was a very long time ago. I don't even know how you would approach a case that old regarding eyewitnesses and documentation or surveillance systems or anything like that. But I got that that is a, a way to approach it if there's any possible way to do that. All right. So the last one I have is actually a reading I did before. And this was about a Belgian backpacker. Um, they wanted to know... Um, let me get, I'll just go ahead and read the question. I was going to summarize it up since this is a reading I had done before, but it's been a really long time. This was back in 2019. It says, hi, Lynn. I'm wondering if you could do a reading on what might have happened to this Belgian backpacker currently missing in Byron Bay. A lot of people had been going into the bush looking for him. The police now are stumped as to what may have happened to him. And they have no more clues left on the disappearance. And his name is Theo Hayes. This, this, gentleman and it was just a lot of oddity about his disappearance and he he's gone they cannot figure out what happened and when I focused on it I just get that they're looking in the wrong place I see him leave a bar and he's headed to a beach watery area 
and I realize that they're looking in the bush, but they need to focus their efforts on a shoreline. I saw him spending hours walking around near the water, throwing stuff in the water as he walked. He was very intoxicated and even passed out or slept near the water that night. I know there's a lot of controversy if he was drinking or not drinking, or was he drunk? Is he just drinking a little and not drunk and all that? But I saw that he was intoxicated near the water. It looks like when he was sleeping, he got bit by something in the image I saw was a snake, not sure if it's literal or symbolic of something or some other animal, but I got that the bite made him weak and sick. I felt he was still alive, but not doing well, but this was back in 2019. And I was just re-summarizing the post that I had done back then. He really needed at that time medical intervention, but he was unable to get it. I think at this time, it's safe to say that this is a recovery mission and not a rescue because I get that what happened to him um, was not recoverable because he did not get the help or able to help himself in enough time. So I think they need to look near a beachy area and possibly they'll be able to recover um, something that again, that was back in 2019 that I did this. So that was all I have for our Mystery Monday Missing and Murder. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. This was a really long post, a lot longer than my normal ones, but uh, maybe you had some takeaway. And if you like these, put something in the comments. I will start doing these a little more often, doing these collective ones where I pull different ones together. And I will leave you with that. Again, please remember to hit the like button. I am Lynn with Psychic Focus at psychicfocus.blogspot.com. Take care. Bye.